in China, they grow a bamboo tree, commonly known as the Chinese bamboo tree. And when they sow the seed in the ground and water it, nothing happens for the whole first year. But they continue to water it and nurture it. And at the end of the second year, still nothing has happened. It fails to sprout even after the end of the third year. But the person growing it must continue to irrigate, fertilize, care for it, invest in the seed. You will be surprised to know that nothing happens at the end of the fourth year as well. And then suddenly, in the fifth year, something miraculous and incredible happens. Within one week, it grows up to 90 feet tall. One week after five years. So did the Chinese bamboo tree grow in one week or in five years? In one week? The answer is obvious because had the person growing the Chinese bamboo tree stopped nurturing it and watering it and fertilizing it and investing in it, when it wasn't showing up or showing any change or any growth, it would have died in the ground. So it had been growing all of those years, even when there was no evidence. Getting success in life is more or less similar to growing a Chinese bamboo tree in China. You have to feed in to yourself for years before anything shows up in your life. Keep your faith in what you're growing and what you do, because you never know when you'll need all that investment and resources in your life. Welcome to the Midlife Wife Podcast, where we choose to rise with courage and successfully disrupt mediocrity to live insanely significant lives that light us up while possibly still in our yoga pants with three day old hair. Are you with me? Hey, I'm Katie Hallberg, top 20% realtor turned real estate investor and broker, a top 6% network marketer, certified personal trainer, and lover of all things from the personal growth, nutrition, and health and wellness departments. I believe when we get out of our own way and let God show up, that's where the magic happens. I'm so grateful that you're here. Let's dig in to reviving your mind, body, and dreams. Eight years ago, a girlfriend from college who was one of those girlfriends that is like in your wedding, you're in each other's weddings. We were pledged sisters in college, and she asked if I wanted to do this 30-day nutrition reset with her and buy some products from her. I was already buying skincare stuff, and I was intrigued. I was curious and always being open-minded to healthy stuff. So I said yes, and I felt incredible after the 30 days. Like I felt I could sleep better, brain fog was lifted, bloating. I felt great. And it led me to sign up to help others feel better. And I created a little bit of income while doing so. But part of the training or culture of that company has been the best, probably better than the products or the income. And that's personal growth and development reading books, listening to on, on Audible, listening to podcasts, going to conferences and hearing speakers and trainers talk about goals and mindset and service to others. I was like a sponge, just soaking it all in. And I made it or it became a daily habit to learn, to grow, to expand, to evaluate my beliefs, throw some of them in the trash, honestly, and build others up or just totally find new ones, new personality traits I wanted to add. Fun fact, our personality is not fixed. We can adjust it. Awareness, heart space, self-talk, vulnerability, and so much more. Not only did I get my physical body healthier, starting eight years ago by eating healthier foods, supplements, protein shakes, probiotics, stuff like that consistently. I also got my mental state healthier. I shore up my thoughts, emotions, mental abilities, and 
really equipped myself. So when I got news from my oldest child that could have taken me out, you know, that kind of news that knocks the air out of your lungs and sets you back, that life changing forever news that can bring you to your knees. Some of y'all know what that is, but my 12 year old, my oldest child, firstborn baby, seventh grader told my husband and I that they really thought they were supposed to be a boy. They're transgender. They're in the wrong body. My oldest of three daughters who are dressed alike in Easter dresses, you know, she really believed and felt that she is a he. So the next 18 months, specifically um, when they were 14 to 16, long story, and that's not what this podcast is about. They were deep and painful. They were challenging. They challenged my faith, human understanding, expectations, beliefs to the very core of my soul. It was really an overhaul, a thorough tilling. If I have any gardeners in there, really it was tilling. But had I not planted, watered, fertilized, or invested into my physical and mental health and personal growth, like the ones that grow the Chinese bamboo tree prior and during the season of my life, I would not have come out the other side as quickly as I did with an intact marriage, family, healthy body. I did have a little stress. <laughs> I mean, I did get a little eczema, which is my first sign of stress on my eyelids. But I came out of this sober, healthy um, relationships with my son, got deeper, and so did my faith in my creator. It is said that what we do in the dark when no one is looking, that will be revealed in the light. When we consistently invest into ourselves, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, it shines through, especially during a crisis. John Maxwell says we cannot become what we need to be by remaining what we are. I love John Maxwell books. We're in a really fun, spicy time in history right now. Wouldn't y'all agree? Has anyone experienced struggle in their life, if not just right now? Or maybe you know someone that's gotten a bad health diagnosis, yet they eat terrible. Or maybe someone has all the cute, amazing clothes and the best purse and shoes, but they never have any money for food and rent. I understand that things happen. Cancer, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, bankruptcy, foreclosure, despite all the prevention, the precautions, and the savings. However, is it possible that if they would have invested more into themselves, emotionally, physically, nurtured that bamboo seed, metaphorically themselves, more, created more equity, that they would have a different outcome? It's possible. I would be bold enough to say it is probable. Equity is something I know about well. I've been a real estate agent and broker for over 25 years. And there's equity in being fair and impartial, but there's also equity about value. And that's what I'm speaking of today. Similar to the value of a company, an asset. Equity is something you can build up and cash out. It's sort of like a savings account, something you can dip into, use when a crisis comes, or you want to advance yourself, prepare for impact when plans change, and they always do. In addition to health coaching, um, I'm a real estate broker and investor, and there is equity definitely in both fields. How do we create physical and mental equity so that we can not only survive, but thrive in life, using that equity to protect ourselves on the setbacks and the crisis and also to propel us forward. So if you are a list taker, I have a few points. I think there's four. And the first one is make a big down payment. When buying real estate, your equity is the market value of real property, less the amount of any liens that may exist. So what you put down, your cash down payment, the day you purchase it, minus how much money you borrow for a mortgage against it, that's your equity. And the equity will grow 
as the values increase. So you can make a large down payment. And your physical health, y'all, that can look like, how do you make a big down payment in your physical health? That can look like doing a 90 or a 30 day nutrition challenge or a fitness challenge and just really getting that laser focus for a short amount of time. Going in for a big change to just like jumpstart some new habits, healthy habits, eating habits, physical exercise habits, consistency. In fact, just a 10% loss in your weight can reap significant health benefits in your metabolic profile, which is like your blood pressure and blood sugars and stress, things like that. And eating healthy foods and avoiding things like gluten, dairy, and soy for 30 days can physically change your blood chemistry. So it's huge. You can do it. And then for like our mental health and shoring up that psychology in our mindset, I like to attend conferences and workshops that last for a few days as a down payment, as a big down payment for our personal growth. I look for ones that include my favorite authors and speakers like Brene Brown and Tony Robbins. When I get immersed away from home and work, I soak it in more and it's a real boost. They're doing a lot of these things online right now on Zoom. And I've even been thinking about going to a hotel for a couple of days and doing one so that I'm not um, sucked back into the reality of my life, but actually focus and immersed and growing and journaling. All right. Number two way to build equity is to renovate, do a renovation. My early marriage in early marriage, my husband flipped houses. In fact, he bought our first house before we even got married and totally flipped it in central Austin. This is back in 1994 or five before all the TV shows came out. Um, about flipping houses and we would buy them for close to a hundred dollars a square foot and then add on to them additional square footage for about $75 a foot and then remodel the existing square feet. We put in a lot of sweat equity, meaning we did the work, but then we could turn around and sell these houses for 200 to $250 a square foot. So more than what we paid for them and more than what it costs for us to add on. So that was our renovation equity. We would remodel the existing add-on. It's an amazing formula we still use, actually, for different things. So that is a way you can renovate, build equity in your real estate, but in your physical and mental health, it's to make improvements. And I recommend taking it slow because when we go too fast, it doesn't stick. Of course, everyone's different and we're all at a different starting point and our nutrition habits and our fitness habits. But generally I have learned in coaching people through nutrition and fitness nutrition for the last eight years, fitness for the last three, that adding is easier than taking away. Adding one to two days of movement weekly or three to four, if that's your level is better, but adding is better than taking away 20 to 30 minutes of brisk walking is wonderful for someone that doesn't exercise at all. My husband's been going walking every morning, oh, probably three or four, four miles. And today he came in all sweaty, burned his 400 plus calories. It's like, wow, that's a lot easier than burning them in his hard fitness class that he goes to. But just walking is something you can add. And the same thing goes with food, adding a healthy meal, add a protein shake for breakfast that has all the vitamins and minerals or a healthy dinner or a healthy snack like an apple and some almonds before you create too many restrictions on what you can't have. So just adding, in fact, I'm working with a client right now and she has self-proclaimed terrible eating habits. I said, let's just add in a protein shake with some spinach and all the frozen berries and the probiotics every morning so that no matter what, you know, you got at least one good meal in a day. In the beginning, I often recommend setting alarms or reminders on our phones to read a book and then set a 10 minute alarm that you've read. Like, so read 10 minutes every day. So, you know, okay, I've read enough or read a chapter or I totally love using my car as a rolling university, always listening to audiobooks or podcasts. I also like to watch Ted talks and documentaries on Netflix. Love it. I haven't been driving as much. Uh, It's, you know, 
the world's waking back up since COVID kind of shut it down, but I will listen to it while I'm folding laundry, while I'm on a walk. There's lots of opportunities to listen to stuff. And if you haven't heard through some of my advertisements in the podcast, I have partnered with Audible and can get you a free 30 day trial. So you can get a free book, a free credit. They call them credits. And you just go to audibletrial.com slash Katie Hallberg. That's K-A-T-I-E-H-A-L-L-B-E-R-G. And that audible trial slash Katie Hallberg, you'll get a free book and it's for 30 days. And if you are already an Amazon Prime member, you can get two credits for two free books for 30 days. And then if you want to stay with the membership, it's $14.95 a month or you can cancel it. But I love it because it's flexible. I can listen to it on the go while I'm doing my laundry. Um, So many things. We drove to the beach in the mountains this summer. I was able to plug it in and listen. And I've even paused my membership for a few months because I wasn't, I was reading physical books and not listening to the Audible so much. And it was super easy to do. So that was great. And another reason I love Audible is because I'm self-employed. I write off that portion against my taxes for education. So audibletrial.com slash Katie Hallberg is another way to renovate your mental health. Okay. Number three, add curb appeal. Add curb appeal, spruce things up, make things look a little bit better. In real estate landscaping, like your mulching of your beds, plants, trees, even some hardscaping like patios, fire pits can earn up to a 35% return on your investment. So that is amazing equity. When it comes to our personal growth and physical health, as we begin to feel better, we begin to do better, right? When we feel better, we feel better about ourselves, our confidence shows, we really start glowing. And the inner peace we get from reading affirmations um, creates just, it really creates a fire in me that's contagious. So I can add curb appeal to my mental health by reading those affirmations doing the personal growth, doing the physical health. It might be um, oh, a great thing I learned was when you don't feel like working out, you can just like at least put on the workout clothes. Go get some cute clothes. Don't go crazy. Just get one outfit and get dressed. Put on the workout clothes because you're not going to work out if you don't have the clothes on. And then maybe your goal is to run you know, a couple miles and you don't feel like running. Just start walking. You know, you put your curb appeal on by putting the clothes on your body. I know I'm stretching this analogy a little bit, but you have to dress the part. You have to act the part. You have to get the vegetables in the refrigerator at the house, and you have to put the shoes on to go do the workout. And you have to drive to the location or walk to the location and get there and baby step your way into it. So I really don't feel like eating this. I really want to eat chips. But if you have the broccoli in your house, say, okay, I'm going to increase my curb appeal. My, my, my fridge looks better and healthier, so I'm going to at least eat a cup of broccoli, and then I can have the chips. I'm going to add and not take away. Increase your curb appeal. All right, finally, number four. Y'all, you can refinance. You can totally refinance. And if you own real estate right now, it's actually really good to refinance. Mortgage rates are really low. So maybe you need to switch mortgage companies. Maybe you need to cash in for a lower interest rate. Life changes. We all know jobs change. Our spouses and partners change. Our location change, our habits change. And just because we've made an agreement with a mortgage company for a 30 year mortgage, doesn't mean we need to stay there or an abusive spouse or in our brain, we got into disordered eating or whatever doesn't mean we need to stay there. It's a lot of work to refinance that, to switch out, to cash in for a better deal. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of courage. You're going to feel uncomfortable, but there's times when we just need to re-examine our existing circumstances and look for healthier options. Maybe it's a new grocery store. Maybe you need to drive home a different way. Refinance the way you're driving home every day because you keep passing the same ice cream store and you need to change that up. Maybe you need to get a new gym. You need to swap out the gym or the or some friends. 
Honestly, they say that we are accumulation or total of the five people we hang around. So if you want to level up, you want to cash in, refinance your relational self, your physical self, who are you hanging out with? Are they doing and eating and being the people that you want to be? Something to think about. All right, moving on. Y'all, we all have to prepare for impact. I know that the world understands that now more than ever. And not just financially. As a multi-passionate entrepreneur that I am, where did I learn that from? I learned that from Everything is Figure Outable, a great book. A multi-passionate entrepreneur. Y'all, I love me a good plan B. But I also like a good C and a D. Multiple, residual streams of income. Equity. We also have to prepare for mental and physical impact. Prepare to pivot and shift when your kid comes to you with some shocking news. You were put on this earth with purpose already in you. You don't have to find it. You just have to move out everything that you've put on top of it that covers and blocks it. Those things on your heart that make you cry Like, oh, or that really make you mad and piss you off. That's your thing. That is your telltale sign that that is your thing to go do in this world. You may not get paid for it. You may not get paid for it yet. But you can figure out a way to do it alongside whatever you need to do to put food on your table. If you aren't in already physical or mental place to go do your thing, You're not fulfilling your purpose. If you know you have these things on your heart that you're supposed to go do in the world, things that make you sad and make you mad, but you physically or mentally aren't equipped or able to go do that thing, you're not fulfilling your calling here on earth. If your physical and nutritional health is um, an area of your life that you need help with, I would love to partner with you. See if we're a fit. See if you're a fit for the 30 days to healthy living or beyond program. But just maybe, or maybe, maybe 30 days is scary and you just need to do like my other friend and client did by just adding a few things here and there. I would love to help you. I would love to recommend good books to you. You can go to katiehallberg.com and see some of my favorite book lists. They're up there under resources. You can connect with me on Facebook. Just search Katie Hallberg. Um, it's, facebook.com backslash Hallberg Katie. It's backwards, but you can search Katie Hallberg or on Instagram. Again, it's at Hallberg Katie. And then you can always email me at the midlife wife show at gmail.com. As one of my business mentors ends her trainings and speeches every time, every time when you reach the end of your life, I want you to hear the words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Now, before you go, if you found value in today's episode, if you connected with something or felt inspired in any way, pretty please take a screenshot for me and post it up in your Instagram and Facebook stories and be sure to tag me because together we can inspire encourage and empower others to live amazing intentional lives. Yes, we can. Let's do it.